Um, I did notice on the website there, 792 different breweries in the United States participated. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And, uh... Type it on the keyboard, making a sound silky smooth, Dolan. I'm here. There you go. In the living room, no less. Did I spy an infusion glass bottle behind you there, Dolan? Was it a big infusion? Oh. Jug? Well, look at this. Oh, yeah, I did. Mm. Yeah, what? I've I've had that for a while now. I uh uh, there's a company local to here called Fisheye Brewing or Fisheye Kombucha, and uh, they have a connection with Infusion, and so their kombucha comes in Infusion. Yeah, interesting. Stuff. Mm. I, Sorry, that just caught my eye. I tried. <laughs> that's a that's a good eye right there. That's a good eye. I thought maybe it was like the dog toy on the couch back there or something. I saw that too, oh, yeah. but that that didn't really get my interest up. <laughs> okay. Obviously, you can uh, see she's kind of tired. <laughs> I see her right there. Yeah. Good job, Coraline. Squirrel. All right. So this week, um, so last week, we wrapped up Mainstream May with awesome seltzers. Uh, I, I say that because I probably still have the taste of seltzer in my mouth a little bit. It's not. Eh. Uh, but this week, um, we've done one of these before. Back during the fires in California, what was that, a year and a half, about a year ago, uh, Sierra Nevada did a, a, a beer called Resilience and sent out the recipe, and then a bunch of other breweries took that recipe, made that beer, and then sent the proceeds back to help out fire relief efforts uh, in California from that, because that's where Sierra Nevada's from, and it was in their own back, right in their backyard. So same sort of thing this week. Uh, there was a beer called All Together that uh, a brewery by the name of Other Half Brewing Company started um, not, not too long ago. And then it invited other brewers and other breweries to make this exact same beer, put all the information out on their website, exactly how you're going to make it, the ingredients list, the labels, everything was on there uh, and the proceeds went back to help the hospitality industry so i think one of the things that um, they said early uh, right at the top of their website was there is an inextricable link that binds ev- that binds together everyone in the hospitality industry brewers servers bartenders bussers dishwashers gms buyers chefs owners they're all in this together and so this was a beer that uh, the proceeds went back to the hospitality industry because we know it probably isn't real, uh, real awesome in the hospitality industry right now because nobody's going anywhere, right? Yeah. So, and there's a lot of stories right now of like people getting knocked the fuck out at places like this. Like, hey, you got to wear a mask. And then like they're getting attacked. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to me. So, it's, yeah, not- it's like extra stressful. And you're yeah. not making any money when you work oh. in those kind of jobs usually. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy right now. So, our friends at Cross Strain Brewing uh, did this beer. So, Bobby and Scott got in on this one. And uh, so, Brian, all three of us have this one, right? We all, all three have this one from Cross Strain. Yes. Um, and then, uh, Brian has one from a different brewery, and I have one from a different brewery. So, the fellows down at uh, Boiler did one a little bit different and we'll talk about that too as we get into it but uh boiler did one down the street in lincoln i have one that's a a collab it's a win and collab that they went together and made and the um steve that was in our office Mm -hmm. is on the can and uh i think i think was there a guy named ryan right i think so is that, that was the guy that sat, yeah, yeah, that sat next yeah. to me. 
Yeah. I was like kind of starting his first batches of brew. Mm -hmm. His picture's on here too. And uh, it's kind of cool. So it reminds me of um, uh, Prairie. You know how they have mm -hmm. some of their stouts have that different, almost like four or six different pictures on it. That's what this one's got. But it's oh, yeah. Look at that. Faces on it. So like the people that made it or whatever. Yeah. I love a good well, caricature. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to open that one first and then I'll catch up with you on the cross train. Yeah, okay. Well, Dolan and I opened the cross train first. And I got to tell you, it is exactly what you would think it is. So it is listed as a New England NE IPA. So New England style IPA. Uh, on, on the can, it just says India Pale Ale 6.5. Uh, ABV by volume, 16 ounce, a worldwide collaboration brewed to support hospitality professionals. So New England style IPA. If Cross Train knows how to do one kind of beer, and they know how to do a couple, New England style juicy hazy IPAs is definitely their jam. Yeah, mine, does yours say, let me look at on there. Yep, it's exactly the same as far as the branding goes, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that was different about this one than the than the Sierra Nevada one, which was there was no, as far as I know, like uh, shared imagery or canning. There was no canning really of it, you know. So right. this, you this one's there. like one extra step up, which is cool, and and it shows the spirit of collaboration. Um, and I have some information on those other companies that are involved in this that we'll get into, but because um, we always talk about kind of about labels, you know, and how I think it'd be cool and stuff. So I did a little deep dive on the other companies that are involved with this and how it was um, being able to be shared and spread to all the other people that are making this beer. I would definitely suggest if you have a chance to hit up a brewery and all the breweries that participated are listed, that is way lighter looking than ours, by the way. Yep. The, the Fernson Woodgrain collab yeah. is way lighter. Um, if you have a chance, go to the website, make sure, see if your brewery, the, the local brewery that's close to you is on there. Um, and I know probably most of them are not open right now to go and just sit down and have a beer, but like Boiler does the Crowlers and Cross Train did the four packs and you look like you've got 12 ounce cans, Brian. Yep, from, I did. That's so they probably, ounce. they probably did what? A six pack of those? I think so. they did six packs and I scored one. Huh. Also on the website, it's really cool. You can uh, search by by state, oh. so wherever you're at, you can and by country as well. But it's mm -hmm. it's in countries too. Um, so wherever you're at, you just kind of click on it, and it'll show you all the breweries and where the breweries are located that have uh, participated. So I thought that was pretty cool. These guys sound pretty cool, actually, you know, and every time I, I'm just, I'm such a sucker for a, for a, you know, brewery story and, you know, the guys behind it and everything else. And uh, 2014, three dudes, Sam Richardson, Matt Monahan, and Andrew Berman founded Other Half Brewing Company, a local brewery in New York, so I'm Brooklyn area, uh, with a simple mission to create beers that they wanted to drink from a company they wanted to be a part of. That, yeah, that, I, it doesn't get any easier than that, right? I would, I, would, I would think that almost all the breweries are started with that in mind. Right. I want to drink the kind of beer that I want to drink, and I want to hang out and work with people that I want to hang out and work with. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably why it's an attractive place to hang out, too, for people like us. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, their vision was to build a passionate team that brewed, this came right off their website, that brewed great beers in the state of New York, done so with effort and thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness. I always, I always have a problem with that word, thoughtfulness, to represent the other half of the industry. So I don't know, maybe they, it seems like a little New Yorker there. Maybe they got a little chip on their shoulder and they wanted to. to well, and, yeah, and in New York, that's a huge, you know, job. Like, right. That sort of thing. That's something everybody and a lot of people in New York, especially they're working two or three of those types of jobs to survive, right. you know, so it's a big, big, big community. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you what, this is for, for a New England style IPA. It's everything I wanted and a nice little bit of bitterness at the end. So it's like juicy, hazy kind of, mm, and then it really, it's nice and, and kind of fruity citrusy. And then with a nice little bitterness at the end. Uh, Dolan, let's hear from you. 
Sorry, I was muted there. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. It's it's the style of IPA that that uh, that I enjoy. Um, yeah, hazy, juicy, just good, just good. Do you? And now, Dolan, you're not normally one for the bitterness. It's got some. It kind of has that at the end a little bit there. It, it does, but like I said, it's not as much as maybe you would find in like a West Coast. Mm-hmm. Definitely not as much. Oh no! Right. Yeah, I wish I, that I had. I wish I had a West Coast version because mm-hmm. I saw that there's the East Coast New England style as one option, and then they had a West Coast version as well. And that would have been great to get a hold of one of those. But to try the differences there, yeah. For and sure. I, I would say that what I'm drinking now is close to a New England style. I think it's. I don't know. The I think the yeast is a little bit different. I mean, it looks different. It, it looks, looks way different. It almost smells like a saison. Oh, wow. that sort of dryness to it. So I'm guessing the yeast is a little bit different than what's on the recipe. But that was the other thing was they're like, okay, this is our base recipe. Here's what we want. Uh, yep. But if that's if if you have it, like if if this is stuff you have around hanging out in your your brew house or whatever, these are things you should have. But if you don't, you know, just do whatever you want. So um, it's not like the recipe was in concrete, but no, they tried to make it pretty universal as far as ingredients most people would have. I talked to Bobby at Cross Strain not to, well, it was probably last, it was last weekend when I picked up these beers uh, and I told him what we were going to do. And he said, yeah, we, uh, we followed it almost exactly, but we changed out one of the hops because they didn't, because he, he goes, well, I don't like that, how that hop, I don't like the flavor of that one. And I like the flavor of this one. So we put, and I wish I remembered what it was. It was, it was a more common one that they use a lot. Yeah. And, uh, I wish I, but my memory is horrible and I don't so remember what he said. On the one I have, the collaboration Fernson one, mm-hmm. it lists the hops that they use, which was Citra, Azaka, and Galaxy. Oh. Mm. So uh, I know Azaka is a hop that it's, it's not super new, but it's not something that a lot of people use um, all the time. Mm-hmm. And I know Founders has a, like a pale ale that's their Azaka pale ale, but um, I was kind of surprised to see that one in there. And I don't know if that's in the recipe. I should have kept it up. Dolan, do you still have that website up? Uh, let me pull. Yes. There was a number of different hops that were listed on there, on that PDF that was they there? have on the website. Yeah. So I wonder <clears throat> if that was on there. Hold on. I got to download the uh, the PDF here. And what's the uh, website? It's altogether.beer or what was it? All, yep. Altogether.beer. Um and then there's a bunch of different tabs on the website. It's actually from top to bottom. You have to scroll quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. Uh, here we go. You can get dot beer. Uh, and like instead of dot com or dot gov or dot whatever, you can get dot beer. It's kind of cool. Um, they probably paid for it, and it's yeah. Uh, it's kind of like um, dot ski. Like a lot of ski resorts have the dot ski. Um, and that just originated from like certain states or whatever, trying to keep their, uh, state owned ski resorts separate from everything else, which is interesting. Did uh, we get a beer with Atlas dot beer, a beer with Atlas dot beer. <laughs> it's a good idea. We should look into it. Maybe. Maybe we should. There you go. Okay. So on this recipe saying for yeast, uh london ale or chico um mash temp for the west coast is for the west is for the west coast Mm -hmm. yeah and london london is what cross train i think uses right that's Mm -hmm. their london uh double dry hop and all that that's that's common for them 2018 silver medal award winner at the great american beer festival yep Mm -hmm. yeah that one that one delicious and then the uh, the hops, uh, Columbus, Mosaic, Cascade, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic. Looks like, what's the difference between these? The Mosaic Whirlpool and then the Mosaic Dry Hop. Um, so dry, dry Hop is after it's done and Whirlpool is when the boil's happening. So it's, it's just different at when you add it into the process gotcha. Same hop, just different timing and then uh cascade dry hop as well 
um, as Cascade Whirlpool. So my beer doesn't have any Cascade and it doesn't have any Simcoe, but it has Azaka and Galaxy. So that's why it tastes different already. And we don't know what's in the cross train one, right? I don't know. I know he's, he, he swapped one out and I can't remember which one it was. And he said it wasn't on the list, but you know what? That's their well, Neither is this one. Yeah. And quite honestly, if the money's still going back to the hospitality industry, that who yeah, cares? I'm sure, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they're not. I mean, if it was some proprietary thing, they wouldn't have released what they have out to the world and said, hey, make this. Right. They also had a homebrew version, which I oh, like really? that. Yeah, they had like a five-gallon recipe, which is kind of cool yep. too. I just pulled that one up. And so this one, um, it's pretty – it's the same. Uh, the only difference is it looks like just – just how much hops you're putting in and how much um, the grain bill. Like, there you go. The grain Ooh. bill is. But as far as like the mash temp and the yeast and all that, everything is the same. Hmm. Just, just amounts are different. Dolan, maybe you should try to make it in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, one, what garage? Two. Okay, well. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd have, we could try to get Frank to do it. How about that? Ooh, that's a good idea. We should get Frank to try to participate in this. I think at the end, and Brian, this will probably lead into your, uh, to your research a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice on the website there, 792 different breweries in the United States participated. Yes. The 48 states who out the, of 50. Who are the two holdout states? Which ones? Who did I don't know. Utah. I, I, and uh, let's go Kansas. Let me look. No. I, uh, oh, come on. Somebody in Kansas. <laughs> had to, Boulevard. Boulevard had to do one. Well, that's, that's on the Missouri, Missouri side. No, is it? Yeah. Are they on the Missouri side? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wonder if you can. Man. Yeah, I don't know. That's. You can't sort it you by can, country either. I'm going to say Utah just because Utah is always one that, right, They their laws are strange. Yeah. We I don't know. know this from previous episodes. Yep, we do. Um, so th it's kind of like a foundation, I guess, is how the money is. It goes back to, okay. and that's for the Restaurant Workers Community Foundation. So I looked into that yesterday a little bit just to see what it was and like what sort of services they do. Um, and first of all, it's their logo is like a fancy hand with a platter, a dinner platter you know, like bring it out to the table, but yep. it has a pineapple on it. So I'm not sure what the pineapple is, hmm. but uh, it's, it looks Isn't the pineapple like the, uh, like the universal sign of welcome? Isn't that? Sure. Maybe. I think. I'll, I'll buy that. That sounds good. I want to say that's true. I want to say, because there's a neighborhood between our house and my mother-in-law's house that as you go into the neighborhood, it's concrete pineapples. Mm -hmm. And they're probably... They're probably like yay tall. Yeah. Right? They're probably a good foot and a half to two feet tall ish. Okay. Well, that, oh. that might be why. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff that they do there is they work, they have like, uh, I looked at their board yesterday and it was like 25 really outstanding people and they all had different areas of expertise. So there's people like, uh, like master sommeliers and then there's people that are like bourbon distillers and there's people that are like, have been restaurant management for you know 20 years for stuff but for the most part everybody seemed pretty young um some of the stuff I work on is wage fairness and then like career ladders so being able to work your way up in the industry is one of the kind of the most attractive things probably you, you hear a lot of stories about like oh i started peeling onions in the kitchen and now i'm the chef or that sort of stuff so they make sure that that is available um gender equity and then any sort of um like workplace sexual violence stuff if you have issues with that they have someone that can help you with that attorneys and stuff um racial justice they support immigrant communities in the especially in new york area and uh it looked like most of the folks were on the east coast that were involved with this um as far as the labeling and logo stuff go i, I dig into that too because i thought it was just kind of cool how they instead of just making up the idea or like, okay, we're going to do this. We're in New York, which is where was ravaged by this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Like a right. bunch of people. Um, and then they got with this firm in Chicago, which was called stout collective. And that's who made the logos. So I thought that was kind of cool. And like 
how do they get to, you know, them? Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stout Collective is a, like a branding and marketing company out of Chicago. Um, they work with a lot of beverage companies and breweries and stuff. So they work with other half, which is who the sponsors uh, are on this. Mm -hmm. uh, they work with old style. Heard of them? Oh yeah. They did a lot of like photography for them. I, I was looking at their website yesterday, the stout collective website. It's very cool. Uh, and you can click in and they'll show like some of the work that they've done for these brands. Yep. Um, and it was like, you know, a couple of hipsters sitting on the side of like a fence eating pizza and drinking old style, which I was at first, I was like, that's pretty cool. It's a Chicago yeah. thing. But then I yeah. looked closer at the pizza and it was definitely New York style pizza. Mm. <laughs> I thought, wait a minute. Mm. I don't know. That was, yeah, it was thin. Um, mm. Revolution. Have you heard of those guys? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They work, they work with Stout Collective. Oh. Um, Teaser may or may not be coming up here in the next couple of weeks. I, I might've dropped that in there on purpose. Um, Parse Rum, P-A-R-C-E, it's a rum company. Um, Wright B Cider, so a cidery. And then Cloudless Hard Seltzer, trying to call back from the last mm -hmm. week. So it's like a craft hard seltzer company also uses them. Um, they designed, let's see, what did I write? The logo and the label. So everybody's can art, as far as the front part looks the same. Mm -hmm. And then you could do whatever you want on the other side. So if it's facing in a cooler, you'll see that altogether logo. Mm -hmm. Cross Train has theirs, which is very on brand for them. Yep. Um, that I have, I don't know what was Boilers. Can you hold that up again? Yeah. So that's got, yep, Boilers, little signature stuff on the yep. bottom, and the rest of it. One is all is the same. I think the only thing different is the color. This is a little bit light blue on this twelve ounce. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the packaging part, so they had the, the labels, like once the labels were designed, that's one thing, but then you have to be able to like format them and scale them and print them. Right. So any sort of brewery thing. And that company was blue label packaging. They're the ones that, um, are the ones that you could order these from. So cross train had to get a whatever from from them. Um, some of the companies that they work with, and these were interesting too, I found their website, uh, Hill Farmstead. Ever heard of that brewery? No. They are in like, this would be Mike Combs question, but like New Hampshire or Delaware or somebody, someplace on the East Coast. And they're really known for like their Saisons, their, their Farmstead style beers. Um, they're super rare and super high, highly rated. So if we went on Untapped and looked that up, it would be like, 4.8 would be the average rating for these wow. beers. Like unbelievable. But they're also super small batch and we never can even sniff them here, right? Sure. So yeah. Um I think Casual Pint gets one of their beers in once in a while. They get like one keg of theirs a quarter or something. I was talking to the guy at Casual Pint once about it and it's not their most famous beers, but it's at least a Hill Farmstead beer. Mm. Um this uh place called Clift. It's called C L I F T Clift Original. And it's like a hair and beard balm company. So like Manly Man stuff. All yep. their products are labeled and printed out of there. Um, Brand Brothers Winery, so all the wine labels from this. Mm. Uh, another brewery that was pretty cool, 18th Street Brewery. And then this one place called Me Care, which I was like, okay, let me look into this. And it's like lotions and hand uh, soaps. They had bath bombs, but it's all infused with bourbon. They're out of Kentucky. So wow. everything that they sell has bourbon in it. So oh. it's like face masks and lotion and exfoliating scrubs, but it's all bourbon. So it's expensive, uh, but it was really marketed and uh, packaged really cool. So I was so, like, there's a market for everything, apparently. So you could do the, you could do the face mask mm -hmm. thing, right? And get shmammered at the same time. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. I, I would do that. <laughs> I think I might order. I might. So I looked up this Hill Farmstead. Uh -huh. You're right. Like these beers are unbelievably high ranked. We need yeah. to try to get our hands on some of these. Yeah, that's a, that's a, we got to make a call to somebody that knows somebody's situation on the East Coast. Holy smokes. Like 21,000 ratings. This one's this, the Galaxy, Double Galaxy IPA 4.5. 21,000 ratings, 4.5. Yeah. And that's not even what they're known for. They're known for their like Saison and some other like table beers, sours and stuff. But yeah. even their Pilsner ranks at like a four. That's crazy. Yep. Hmm. All right. 
So, I, so I've been uh, looking at this, this map really, because I'm trying to find the two states that didn't do it. And I've only been able to find, I've only been able to find the one. Um, don't tell us. Don't tell you. Yeah, I want to guess. I want to, th- I want to throw an actual guess. Okay. Mm. I'm going to say Idaho. Mm. Yep, that's the one. Is it really? Yep. Wow. <laughs> Man. Yep. Idaho, I can't find the other state. I've, I've gone through every huh. single, every hmm. single, every other state, and I, I just can't, I'm not finding it. But Alaska, Idaho, Hawaii, did you check the, you know, yep, Alaska, contiguous? Alaska has two, um, and Hawaii has, Alaska has two, let's see, where's Hawaii? What are the two in Alaska? What are the two breweries in Alaska? I bet they Anchorage. Hmm, probably. Are 49th state, and brewing mm-hmm. and then anchorage and they're both in anchorage mm-hmm. uh then- so i went to i went to anchorage brewing company i did not make it to 49th state and i'm and i'm sad about that when we were there well, i'll just have to go back i know Man, hawaii that is sucks. uh beer lab and yep. in you island ales huh. beer lab is if i'm not mistaken a super tiny little spot that I have a shirt from, and I think, um, who's the guy that wears the Falcons hat? The, the recruiter, Tom, is that his name? Tom, yeah, Tom yep. He has one of their shirts too, a Hawaii Beer Lab shirt. So I was like, yeah. super random that it's uh, two people in the same office have the same shirt. Dude. And I don't know if he's been there, but I've never been there. My sister brought it back for me. So. Wow. Uh, here's, do you guys have anything else about altogether? Otherwise, I have my, my research. I just thought it was interesting. Like I went, I wrote down a couple of the countries All right. in addition to now that we're kind of talking about that again, that 51 different countries have participated Australia. And this is just a cross section, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, Argentina, Spain, France, South Africa, Greece, Romania, Belgium, England, Germany, Denmark, Ireland, and Scotland. Some of those are, you know, beer countries. And Germany. some of them, right? I mean, that's are Ireland, what? Chile, or something like that. Yeah, yeah Chile, Argentina, South Africa. Some of those places I haven't heard anything about COVID there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like some places I've heard, like New Zealand, they like two weeks mm-hmm. ago had no cases, like new cases. They had it all locked down. Yeah. And then there's other places like us that are still finding new cases every day. So it's interesting that, like, the breweries around how they, you know, how they decided this is something they wanted to do. Right. The crazy irony, and I left this one for last, uh-huh. China. China. Oh, nice. There were two breweries. It looks like there were two breweries in China that have participated in this as well. So I think I ahead. have, I don't know. I'll have to look. I think a friend of the show, Charity Crawford, was in hmm. Vietnam, maybe? Philippines? Somewhere like that. Okay. At a craft brew bar. A couple, it was like try two years ago. And she sent me a message, and she was like, do you want some merch from here? And I was like, hell yes, I do. Yeah. A craft beer bar and wherever Philippines, I think it was. Yeah. So I have, I have a hat that's a, like, <laughs> says, like it's a craft beer brewery, but it's from like Manila or some, some place like that. that. Was, Cause I'm always looking for stuff for the beer fest, you know, try to yeah. out, outdo. So that's, that's pretty outdone. I don't know of anybody that's got anything like that. Any from anywhere farther no. than that. No, not at all. That's crazy. That's really cool. Man, did you find the other state yet, Dolan? No, I cannot. I cannot mm. find the other state unless Alabama. Nope. There's in Hattiesburg. Mm, Hattiesburg, yeah. Hattiesburg. Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to think of an of a, a a less populated state. Did Utah? Did you check Utah? Utah has one. Uh, let's see. I just Maybe pulled that up. Utah. 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 Yeah, they so, have one brewery in Salt Lake City, Templin Family Brewery. There you hmm. go. A couple of years ago, um, when I was just kind of starting to get into this and I was trading beers back and forth at, at the old workplace, we had, you know, multiple offices swinging. So we had people coming in and going. Yep. And one of the offices was in Mississippi. And at that time, there was like four breweries in the whole state. They had a, a law up until like, 2010 that limited capped the amount of breweries that they could have in the whole state 
So there was like <laughs> literally the four breweries in Mississippi until like five years ago. Wow. Something crazy like that. Uh, this cross train one tastes a hundred percent different than this one. I wish you were here so we could try yeah. that. Is that look it just looks different? I wish, yeah. That's the that's the negative I see about uh continuing these uh quarantine episodes is that if it's something you know super we're gonna have to get stuff that we can get four packs or six packs of because it's gonna be uh pretty hard to give it to you in a ziploc bag yep Mm. yeah um so as soon as i saw this name uh it stuck out in my mind all together the logo the the saying i don't know where it came from um, other than that's other half's thing, right? So mm-hmm. that's what they came up with. But it, it's stuck into my head as a chant or a, from a song. So we're going to get into that. And uh, I bet you, you might not know mm. the song. But I you might. Good, I got a pretty good guess. Is it all together now? Uh, no. Okay, that's, the, that's what I was thinking of. Okay, well, there you go. Because it's a Beatles song. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get into that because okay. that's what I think of. When I think of all together, it's all together now is, is what sticks in my brain. I can hear Paul McCartney saying that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we'll, you know, sneakily drop some audio. Here. One or two seconds. You can yeah. do that, Dolan. One or two seconds right here. Yes, I can. There it is. You could probably just get the phrase all together now. That's how it goes. All right. You can cut that if you need. Uh, so here we go. Uh, that song was recorded in 1967 on may 12th so we just about just missed it a week ago the anniversary for that which is crazy what 50 uh my math is sketchy 50 it was almost 60 years ago 55 years ago wow like that uh and it was released in 1969 on january 13th um it was recorded during the magic mystery bus sessions uh but it didn't come out or magical mystery tour i should say Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was a major faux pas on my mm-hmm. part. I apologize, Beatles fans. Uh, it came out on the Yellow Submarine movie soundtrack in 1969. Um, it's basically written to be like a children's sing-along song. Like that was the idea of it was to get crowd participation. Um, it's about two and a half minutes long or maybe even a little bit shorter than that. Um, it came out as a single a couple years after the movie came out in Europe in 1972. So it's, uh, there's like some limited 45s that has that song on it as the A side and the B side or the flip side of that record is Hey Bulldog, which is a great John Lennon song, totally hmm. undervalued and underappreciated also from the soundtrack of Yellow Submarine. Have you seen the Yellow Submarine movie? Yes, no, no. I was lucky enough the night before I started working at Atlas to see this movie screened at the Alamo Draft House. I had never seen it before. So I got to actually got tickets to go see it in the theater. Um, and it was the night before I started here. And it was, it was weird and psychedelic and awesome. And I was, yeah, I had a couple of beers that night. And uh, it was, yeah, that was the kind of the, the mindset I needed to be in. Because it was super trippy. It's, it's trippy, man. You should, it. Dolan, it, 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 it might be up your alley right there. You, it's might, worth a you watch. might want to check that out. It's mostly worth yeah. a watch just to hear the music and to see uh-huh. the, kind of the cool art of the 60s. Like, it's all hand-drawn. It's not like, you know, there was no computers that they're doing back then for animation. So just to huh. see how they interpreted that. And is, to it, have, is it as weird as, like, the Pink Floyd animations? Different. Uh, less violent, I'd less say. Less violent, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's weird. I mean, it's this is you know mid '60s um, in London, so yeah. yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, I love that movie, and that's where that's where the song really shines. It's two different parts of the movie. It's in like an animated, uh, almost call it like oh, like when they like a montage, I guess basically. So they're mm-hmm. they're speeding the story along of the of the movie. For this with this song and at the end they perform it as the Beatles in the movie so you get like a actual person version of the song too which is kind of cool um, it was covered in 1994 on the classic unplugged album Kermit Unplugged by the Muppets 
And then in 2010, it was covered um, by a little, uh, some up, up and coming guy named Andre 3000 uh, <laughs> from Outcast. <laughs> so he had a version and then there was like 500 or maybe a thousand um, copies of vinyl that were made of this and put out into the world. So those are super rare to come by. Uh, Kenny Loggins did a version of it in 2009. And then it's been in commercials for Sprint, uh, cell phones, Kohl's department store, and then some TV show called America's Test Kitchen, which I have not seen, oh, but I've yeah. heard of. Mm-hmm. So it was in that. Um, then, this is going to pivot to my secondary um, related information that we're going to talk about all together now is yep. the title of a documentary that is about the making of the Cirque du Soleil show Love, which is in mm. Vegas. Yeah. Have you at seen that show? I believe that is at the Mirage. It is at the Mirage. Have you seen it, Rich? I have not. No, it's, one, it's on my list. Uh, my wife is not a Beatles fan at all. Um, she doesn't see... Uh, she doesn't see the value in the Beatles, which oh is my a, gosh. It's a point of contention. With You're her. still married. That's well, good for you. Yeah, uh, is she a Rolling Stones fan? No, 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 oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, oh boy. No, not one of those. It's just like she never really saw, like, I will, uh, oh, just the greatest songs written of all time. She just didn't get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't fine. know. Like, you know? she just, yeah, she just doesn't, she doesn't jam with her and she doesn't get it. So we just don't talk about it. We just don't talk about just it. Just pretend it's not there. Uh huh. Yeah. The Beatles in the room. Okay. So, yeah. anyway, that's a documentary about the making of that show. And it was the only, it's the only show I've ever seen in Vegas. And it was totally awesome and just mind boggling how in a world of movies and CGI, like if you go to a movie nowadays, it's pretty much a superhero movie and it's pretty much computer movie. Right. And then to see these human beings do this stuff, you're just like, Holy crap. Like people are really capable of amazing things. Yeah. And they spend their whole lives training to do one thing. Right. Whether that's trapeze or, tightrope or tumbling or whatever but it's very impressive uh so i wanted to go a little bit deeper in on that because i was like uh, cirque du soleil let's talk about that so yeah. here we go uh it comes from montreal quebec uh in the 80s and it was like a troop of street performers that they would just do acrobatic stuff and like for tips like in the street um they do this sort of stuff in london too uh, where it's just like crowds walk by and they put on shows. New York City, same way in the subways and that sort of thing. But in Quebec, this is where it started. Um, was Basically what that means is Circus of the Sun, Cirque du Soleil. Um, in, they get in Canada, which is really cool, and Dolan might think about moving, um, they give actual funding. The government pays you to be a musician. They really um, treasure the arts there. So if you're an actor or you want to be a director or whatever, like they, they publicly fund your career and your money. You're making money basically by doing art paintings and whatever. So they, they fund that. Mm, Dolan, don't get any ideas. I don't think bass players are musicians. Mm. <laughs> Sting would disagree. <laughs> uh, so they um, are making money doing this on the street and they're making it from the government. Um, they finally get enough money saved up so they can actually open uh, like a theater performance. And their first one was a, like a legit circus, had actual animals in it and stuff. Oh. Um, and then they kept growing it. And they got some investors. And from the 90s to 2000, um, 2000s, I guess, not until 2010, but before that, um, they went from one show or one theater to 19 different shows running simultaneously in 300 different cities in the world. Every continent on the U.S. except Antarctica had a Cirque du Soleil show at one time. Wow. So Vegas in the the United States was the main place. Um, From what I could tell on their website, it looked like from 2005 to maybe 14 or 15, there was seven different Cirque du Soleil shows happening in Vegas at the same time. Um, The first one was called... I'm going to say it's mystery. It's spelled differently. It's French spelling. That was the first time I was ever like aware of them. And that was in 93. 
like that was stare. Yeah, was, it looked like angry. that. Yeah. I remember seeing that like on Taxi Cab or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like on the sign. And that, that debuted in December of 93 in Vegas. And I was at Treasure Island. So that was, besides their big boat show outside on the Strip, that was their, their big pull to get people into the theaters there. Mm -hmm. and I want to say it's still at Treasure Island, I think. Maybe. I don't know. That one might still be around. Okay. Some of them have come and gone, and some of them are still around. Um, there's one called O at the Bellagio. Bellagio, so, yeah. Bellagio first opened. That was their big moneymaker thing. That's the one where they have, like, like they go underwater and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, there's yes. a tank, and they go underwater. Yes. And it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. These things are like Hollywood movies, but they do them two times a day. It's mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> um, then there was one, the first one that opened up in Disney World, I wrote down, was La Nuba, N-O-U-B-A. Oh. I assume, I bet Seitner's seen this one. Mm. And uh, then they had two different ones um, going for a while that were Michael Jackson-themed ones. Mm -hmm. I think one's still going and one is, has been closed. There was one for a while in Vegas that was called Viva Elvis. Um, mm -hmm that is now shuttered and done. Mm. And last year they debuted one in New York city at Madison square garden. Um, it's Christmas one. Twas the night it's called. Hmm. I would be down to see cause I love Christmas stuff. So maybe they'll do it this year. Who knows? But yeah. So last year was the first Christmas slash holiday themed Cirque du Soleil. Uh, the guy, one of the main uh, people that founded it sold his shares out in the, in the two thousands. And that's when they really kicked in and like went to overdrive and really started putting them all over the place. Hmm. And uh, it's still, they just bought the Blue Man Group recently. So they own that as, they're like a subsidiary company of them now. So really? It's like for, I don't know, like $85 million or something. Wow. Pretty good for probably three dudes that, um, you know, came up with that. Did you know Fred Armisen was that, tried to do that? Blue Fred Armisen tried it out as a Blue yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Do you know where Blue Man started? No, where? Chicago. Started in at a, a little tiny theater in Chicago. Huh. And I believe it still like runs Second there. Second City, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It still runs there. Chicago is a theater town, even though a lot of people think New York, but mm -hmm. Chicago is that too, you know? Well, it's a baseball town too, so. So that's what I have for, for All Together and All Together Now, because I've heard that soundtrack uh when i was in school in college um i wanted to get out of there as fast as possible i had x amount of dollars i had inherited um and that was the only reason i went so i was taking classes i knew i could get through to get my degree and get out into the world one yep. of the classes i took was the history of rock and roll perfect it was the yep. only a i think i got in college <laughs> <laughs> but one of the assignments in the class was you had to like write a critical review of an album, right? So you're a rock journalist, basically, which was cool. Uh, and I decided to pick the only Beatles album I didn't own at the time, which gave me a reason to go buy it on CD. And that was the Yellow Submarine album. Hmm. So that was my first time I heard that song, which would have been in 1999, I guess. So 20 years ago. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not a great song, but it's catchy. And if you're, in the, if you're listening to the album, I highly suggest listening to the first five or six tracks because those are the Beatles. And then after that, it's all George Martin instrumentals to fill out the soundtrack. So it's uh, also cool if you're in the right headspace for that. Uh, but the Beatles are not involved in that sort of stuff hmm. after about track five, I think it is, off the top of my head. Hmm. So that's, that's what I know. One of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the few, jo no, 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 Ringo Starr sang songs yeah. was from the one that he sang was on the yellow submarine well album, it's right? one of his hits yeah okay okay he well, had okay. A, as with the beatles then how yes because the beatles didn't really let ringo sing too much well he got he got one song per album okay and uh most of them weren't hits uh but yellow was submarine was what's that was that contractual i'm today? sure it was not back mm -hmm. then i don't okay. think they had anything i think that was just them um, being nice. Okay. And that's also kind of what led to, I mean, George Harrison got a couple of songs, mm -hmm. you know, so that led his triple album. His first solo album was a triple album because he had so many great songs and, <laughs> but guess what? John Lennon and Paul McCartney had great songs too. That's true. And hell, even Ringo had a few songs that hit number one. So <laughs> that was a, a good problem to have. One of my favorite Beatles, like goofy Beatles songs ever is uh, Maxwell Silverhammer. 
Yeah. I believe that is a George Harrison. It might be. I think so. I don't know. I like it. Um, all right. I'm going to try the uh, boiler version of this. Here's the thing. The boiler version, it doesn't list the hops or anything else like uh -huh. that. Uh, the cross strain, check on the ferns and wood grain one. The cross strain one is 6.5. Yeah, it's 6.5. It says right on the label, right underneath there. This one may be a point of contention, 7.5. Mm. I don't know. Hmm. So we'll see. I don't know. It, yeah. um, you know it what I do know? What? They all sold out everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not like wow. they're not making them again, I don't think. Maybe they can. It didn't have any, it looked like it was open ended date on the website. Like people could brew it up until whatever. Mm -hmm. I wonder how they keep track of the funds for this. You know what I mean? Like for that fire mm -hmm. one and for this one, like, is there something in their point of sale that says, oh, this was a pint of this altogether beer and we need to share. Sure. Like, I wonder how they track that. I bet. Yeah. I bet they got something like that. Here's the thing. So I, I know there is a, at least here in Omaha, um, there are, there are two, there are two kind of schools of thought when it comes to IPAs. There's the cross strain is makes the best IPAs. And then there's the boiler makes the best IPAs. Mm. Like I've seen these arguments happening. All right. Yeah. And I, I know where I land. It's regard, regardless, it doesn't really matter. There are some people that out there that probably think somebody else makes the best IPA, Pint Nine or I think I um, know, Brickway, whoever. Yeah. Regardless, this doesn't seem, this seems like, uh, it seems like their take on it, but it doesn't seem like an IPA, if that hmm. makes any sense. It's very. The boiler one. Yeah, the boiler one. It's. Um, it looks, the color looks similar. Mm -hmm. Very similar color. Um, yeah. There's a bitterness right up front, whereas the cross strain, you got the bitterness on the back. Um, there's not a whole lot of juiciness to it. Maybe it's the West Coast version. Um, but it's not hoppy enough for that, huh? It's not. It really isn't. No. It, here's the thing. Like, if I were to, and I've drank a lot of boiler beers. They've done some great stuff. The mimosa gozas are unbelievable. They've yeah. done some stouts that are just off the charts. Like, yeah. they are, they are a great great brewery and they do some great stuff they're very good at some of those things and this tastes like a beer that they would make if you were to put this beer in front of me and say you need to guess the brewery i could guess this is boiler just yeah. like that just because it tastes like something that they would do well that's kind of what you're looking for as far as your fingerprint as a brewer right like you want right. people to know your style which is cool mm -hmm. and uh i think a lot of that comes down to just your preferences what you what your normal hops are, or what your mm -hmm. yeast strain that you like to use is. Yep. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of cool, actually. It, it gives, shows some individuality in the thing where the idea of it is to be under the umbrella of this big thing, right? Yep. So right. you can still step out and, and show what you want to show. And I can tell you, I do. I like it a lot. It's, it's great. If I had to choose, I would think the cross strain one is more my style because it's way more juicy up front, bitter on uh -huh. the back. And this doesn't have the juiciness up front. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's still really, really good. I just, I haven't had the boiler one, but since it's seven, five, I would choose that one second. The cross strain one for me is where it's at. This thing is really good. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one drinkable, but it tastes more, it's dry. It's like a Saison to me almost. I almost uh, wonder if that's juicy. That's like a, the, the, again, when I think of Fernson, I would think I would think that like I've drank enough uh -huh. Fernson beers that yep. I, I would probably I may guess that, and that's not yeah, a yeah. bad thing whatsoever. Nope, that's just that's just their style and what they you know there's there's like you know every brewery's got the head guy right, and yep. and they're basically basing everything off of what he likes to do. It's yep. his spot, so it's kind of fun to to get into these after after so long, especially when we're drinking these local beers that we're we're getting used to now it's fun to be able to like pick it out and point it out and, and talk about it a little bit differently than we would have, you know, yeah. a year and a half ago. Oh, it'd have been totally different a year and a half ago. Our perspectives maybe would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. Yeah. So I've got a couple things. Um, I went through every single state. <laughs> Dolan, Dolan heard nothing of what we talked about, but he nothing. was like, this is, this is what I was doing the whole time. I went through every single state the website is wrong. There's 49 states that did it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Why did you guess Idaho? Is there something behind that? 
the only thing, the only reason I guessed Idaho was that I don't think I've ever had a beer from Idaho. Interesting. That I, that I know of, you know, so I thought of every state I can think of at least a, one brewery. Right. So that's, that's why I base you one brewery in Idaho. I know <laughs> Idaho makes a lot of hops now. A lot of the new hops come from there. Mm. But as far as breweries, I don't know any. That's why I guessed it. So we need a we need a beer from Idaho then. So if you're in Idaho, send us a beer. The local Idaho. I think we have some like yeah. Coeur d'Alene. There's a place that we that we mm-hmm. uh, have spots at, I believe. Right on. Uh, okay, and then the other thing is is do you guys have a favorite Beatles song? Oh my gosh, man! The Beatles were my first music like infatuation mm. which is probably true for a lot of people yeah um do you remember this would have been probably your college time rich or maybe just right after but when the anthologies came out yeah and that was like the documentary series and they had those double albums came out and i was right at the time where i was i had a job i had spending money mm-hmm. i was just getting into music and those things hit and i was just blown away by the beatles and I have always been pretty much ever since. Like, I'll go through a couple of months where I don't listen to them, and then I'll have the Beatles channel on in my car for six weeks straight. Like, mm-hmm. there's just I don't know, Dolan. This is this is a whole nother deal, man. If right. I had to pick one, if I just right now, I would say um, two of us. Two of us. That's the song I would say is my favorite. That's right a now. Great choice. Uh, I- Mine is this is this is easy easy, uh, the long and winding road. Oh yeah, man, I love that song. That, you better, you it, better pick a John Lennon song then, Dolan, because we've got two Paul McCartney's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I I have to say that my favorite song is Eleanor Rigby. Um, that's a good one. Yeah, just yeah. that's that's the one that my dad always played when I was little. That's the probably the Beatles song that I learned a lot of the lyrics to before any other song um, by any band ever. So yeah, that one, I, I, I listen to that one pretty regularly, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I will, I will rudely shush people if the long and winding road comes on to hear the whole song. Mm. I don't care what they, I don't care if their feelings are hurt. What if it's your, what if it's your wife? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Uh, we were sitting outside at one point, and um, I think I, I think I totally have told you guys this. So she has a playlist on on Apple Music, and I will sneak songs onto her playlist. So like when we listen to them, oh. like on a speaker out in the you know outside on yeah. the deck or whatever, um, I will sneak songs onto her playlist, and I snuck that on there. And she was like, what's this? And I shushed her. And I shushed her for the whole song. And she was mad for a probably good half hour. And I yeah. was not because I love that song. That is funny. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm a, yeah, you know me. I'm a, I'm a music person. And it all really starts with them. And then you can trace a lot of stuff out of there. I mean, I have a Absolutely. playlist on Spotify that's nothing but Beatles covers. Like, it's no has no Beatles mm-hmm. songs on it. They're versions, but it's. 700 Beatles covers. I mean, there's there is some great Beatle covers yes. out there, though. Yes. Some of them, I wonder, I mean, it, it, some of them are better than the original. And that's <laughs> I don't know. Me. That, my don't my opinion. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, awesome. I will give it to you, Dolan. I'll give it to you because I think the Joe Cocker version of uh, A Little Help of My Friends, like mm-hmm. the Wonder Years theme, so- the theme song they use for that, that's a cover of the Beatles, uh, and it's probably better than the Beatles version, I would say. So I, I feel like you're okay there. There's, there's just some songs that just, I mean, I'm not saying that they're better and, you know, because obviously the Beatles wrote the song, right? Sure. So I'm just saying that I'd rather listen to that version, you know. Thank, mm-hmm. God, for the Beagle, thank God for the Beatles writing the song, otherwise I wouldn't have that version, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm so wow yeah that's this could be a 17 hour podcast if we got into the beatles we better, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. better roll it up yeah well so okay so last thing to do let's check untapped for i went to the cross train one first okay. uh dolan has already checked it in oh cheater really, he, he's been drinking too much during the quarantine well, i had checked one in two four packs of that 
<laughs> and ate them. And I went, uh, I mean, I shared, I gave some to people. So, you know. You uh, 122 check-ins only on the uh, cross train version. And 10 of those were Dolan? And, and only and 10 of them were Dolan, yes. <laughs> nice. So, uh, what do you, where do you think we're at on this one? 4.18. Dolan, do you know? I think I rated it a four. You did? Is that, mm-hmm. right? okay. that is correct. Um, man, I, I, I think after this one, I would rate it a four two five, but mm. I'd have to say that we're around a 4.2. For the first time ever, Dolan is right. 4.20. Damn it. He <laughs> the price has righted me. Stoners <laughs> rejoice. 420. <laughs> Dolan hey, man. Hops are in the family, you know? <laughs> yep, exactly. They're cousins. Yep, there we go. So Dolan got that one down, right? So you guys are one one each on the uh, right on the head. It only took us a hundred and something episodes <laughs> to get to right. Yeah. Only. Uh, I was going to look up the um, – oh, Yeah, look up the boiler one. I'm going to look up the boiler one because it's interesting. Um, I won't say who, but uh, someone was mad that they were – it was a seven. Mad. Um, how about Annoyed that I, mm-hmm. I spoke to recently that it was a 7.5 instead of a 6.5. So I, I know this person because they expressed that to me earlier today. So. Super weird. Um, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, uh, boiler all together. Here we go. Oh, interesting. 88 check-ins. So similar. Yeah. Um, Less than a hundred. Tell you, you, you didn't really try it. So I will, yeah. I will just tell you 4.13. Hmm. So I would go a solid four on that one. I think it's a good drinkable, nothing wrong yeah. with it. I yeah. wish I was there because there's a lot of it. So I, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I would. Um, Mr. Seitner is going to finish this one. He was, okay. he was, he was me clamoring the, uh, for it. Oh, yeah. He was giving me yeah. the stink eye on the way in here. So. Yeah, that's one of the problems with him being in the office is he tries to call dibs even before the episode starts. Uh, yeah. He's kind, of the, he's kind of the granddaddy of all of this, actually. So I, I'll yeah. give it to him. Yeah, that's true. He. Yeah, that that was our our bonding moment. My first day I ever met him. Yeah, he he popped up and like a like a groundhog out of the hole and uh, <laughs> said, "Oh, you like craft beer? I like it too, man. You got to meet some of my friends." And blah blah blah. And that was how I met him. His Seitner energy just washed over me like a sunset. Oh, beautiful. Have you ever seen my uh, ever Steve, my Steve Seitner impression? Have you ever no. seen? No. Oh yeah, because he's so excitable. And oh he's, yeah. Ooh. Like that. That's Ooh. pretty good, actually. That's that's what he does. So I'm sure. Oh, you like craft beer? Oh, yeah. okay. You gotta meet my friends. I know Bobby. I know Bobby Cross. I grew up with him. I used to drink beers on his deck. Yep. That's, it was that's pretty him. much like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. So then the Fernson all together. Here we go. Uh, collab with Woodgrain. Actually listed right on there. Only yeah. 29 check-ins Dang. on this one. Yeah. Dang. You know, Sioux Falls is a, South Dakota is a small place. I'm guessing they didn't make a whole lot of it either. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? What are you going to rate that one then? I'm going to go three seven five. You're close. Three point eight. Yeah. So you're right on. Yeah, definitely drinkable. I mean, I'd have it again, mm-hmm. but it, uh, but for me, the cross train one was a little bit, just a little bit more in my wheelhouse. New England style IPAs. I think we found on there on doing this that New England style IPAs is is that's definitely our jam. Yeah. I really wish we could have got a West Coast somewhere. I don't know who made one, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if okay, if we can get one, then we'll come back and we'll revisit this. And, I might uh, be able to and, talk and my do my brother in law into doing the homebrew version mm-hmm. of it. That'd be fun. Maybe, maybe we could do that a little bit later in the year and mm-hmm. just like recheck in because he's always looking for something to brew. So I think it'd be a blast. Put so, you a couple awesome. places. Well, if you are Australia. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. Could you score us a New Zealand version of this one? That'd be fantastic. Uh, I have yeah. I have a connection in Australia. I don't know if it's where. Wow! It is. If you can make that happen, yeah. So if you're anywhere close to one of those breweries, check out the website altogether.beer. Has every single brewery that did this. Uh, it goes for a good cause. It's not super easy right now, and especially for those people that are in that line of work. Any uh, any hospitality type of worker. Uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a difficult time. That's for sure. So, and this money would go to help them out and 
if it's anything like the couple beers that we've tried here, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. You bet. All right, Brian. We're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.